This is the Louis T. Network. The journey is long, and nobody said it was going to be easy. But all we've got is uh, that. you have any uh, quarterback news for all us? All that believe. Yes, we do have is news. Uh, we have announced that Kirk Cousins will be the starter for 2015 moving forward. Um, and I think all three quarterbacks should be commended for their efforts. Um, their willingness to get better, but when it's all said and done, after all the film that we've gone through, all the off-season activity, all the training the camp footage, we feel like at this court. time, Kirk Cousins gives us the best chance to win, and that's where we're going. When you say for 2015, does that mean barring it's Kirk's team? Welcome, all my fellow Redskin brethren and sisters. I am your man and resident Redskin fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here, Redskins. Point. Bow and go, week three edition. We got a big one coming up on Thursday night. New York Football Giants on the road. First road game for the Redskins. First divisional game for the Redskins. First road divisional game for the Redskins. First primetime game for the Redskins. A lot of firsts. That's big time football right there. We'll get to that in a second. But before we can get to the go portion of this show, gotta put the bow on the week two victory over the St. Louis Rams. It was a big win. I talked about how gratifying that was as a Redskins fan. Not often that Redskins fans come together and unite for one common goal against a team that's a non-divisional opponent. A lot of Redskins fans wanted that game. And again, when it's not a divisional opponent, that's rare, but that Rams game from last year left a bad taste in all of our mouths. And so we really wanted that one bad. The Redskins went out and obliged and went and got it. And they were dominant in the football game. And I'm gonna talk about some of the things that jumped out to me. Uh, the defensive line, I talked about both the defensive and offensive lines needed to be dominant for us to have a chance. If you watch the bowling goal from week two, simply I said we have to win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football that we did in this football game. The offensive line was outstanding. I thought Sean Laval had arguably his best game as a Redskin to date. They were pulling him out. He was out in front, mauling guys out in space, paving the way for Matt Jones. Who? Matt Jones. I thought this offensive line as a whole was outstanding. Aaron Donald, again, I say this all the time, never ever trust a man with two first names, and that's exactly why. It's players like Aaron Donald, it's guys like Aaron Donald that give people with two first names a bad rap. That's a bad, bad man. And he was trying to be a one-man wrecking crew. We wouldn't allow it to happen, though. We kept everything else along that defensive front quiet for the Rams. And Aaron Donald did some damage, but it wasn't enough. We did some really good things on the offensive side of football, and it all started with the five guys up front. I thought the running backs were outstanding. What can I, one more can I say? What more can I say about AM? Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's up for more us. And Matt Jones, who? Matt Jones. They were stellar. And my nickname for him, moving forward, is Mojo. Okay, Mojo. Who wants some of Mojo, man? Morris and Jones, who wants some of Mojo, man? Mojo, that's what I'm going with. And Morris gave it to him early. Jones finished him off late. It was a beautiful combination. And I thought, again, offensive line deserves all the credit there. Kirk Cousins, outstanding game. 85% completion percentage, 23 of 27, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Didn't have the one errant throw, doesn't matter. They didn't pick it off. And so Kirk Cousins was sparkling. Huge drive at the end of the game. A 12 play, 72 yard, six minute and some change drive to put the game away. And so I just thought he was magnificent on the day. Skill guys, Jordan Reed, Jay Reed was out. Damn. And it's funny, I had a conversation on Facebook, on the Facebook page of BFG, who you know is a dear friend of the program, and he basically said to anyone that was listening, and he kind of threw it out there, and a lot of Redskins fans commented, and he said, hey, with the uh, calf injury, that or quad injury that uh, Jordan Reed sustained in practice, and he's up in the air as to whether he's going to play, should we just go ahead and sit him out and not play him against the Rams and get him ready for the Giants, since that's a divisional game? 
And BFG and a, a number of Redskins fans were like, yeah, we probably should do that. And I'm like, uh, no, we can't do that. We're not good enough to sit Jordan Reed out. If the man can go, lace him up, send him out there. I know Jordan Reed is a little different, and he's a guy that is off injured, but I don't give a damn. This is football. If he's going to get injured, he's going to get injured. But we need all of our horses, especially one like Jordan Reed out on the field. We need all our horses in the starting gate when those gates open and we need them to take off running. And Jordan Reed is one of the biggest horses that we need at that starting gate before they open it up. Because that guy is a mismatch nightmare. You saw it in this game. Without Jordan Reed, I don't know if we win this football game as decisively as we did. He is a difference maker. And there is no way if this guy can go that he doesn't suit up and play for this football team. And I don't know how long this is gonna last. So we just need to enjoy the ride while we can because Jordan Reed is a difference maker, especially without Deshaun Jackson on the field. We need Jordan Reed, and this guy has been a huge difference maker for us in the early portion of this season. That being said, the defense was just as dominant as the offense. The defensive line, they dominated. I can't say enough about Jason Hatcher and the impact that he has. I thought Ricky John Francois had his best game as a Redskins in this football game. I thought Stephen Pyre, Stephen Look good in this game. I thought the whole defensive front, Swaggy, Big Swaggy, Chris Baker had pressure on the day. I just thought the whole defensive line was outstanding. Uh, what about K Rob? Keenan Robinson has the potential to be one of the best inside linebackers in all of the National Football League. His uh, combination of physicality, temperament, and athleticism is matched by few in this league. Did you see him run down that wide receiver seven yards in the backfield on a reverse? I mean, it's a thing of beauty. This guy plays with an edge that many of our Redskins don't play with, and that's why I think this guy has a chance to be something special. PRJ left the game with a calf strain. Don't know if he's gonna be ready for the, the Thursday night tilt against the Giants. All indications point to him not. Uh, being ready to go. Will Compton stepped in. Did you even notice Will Compton was in the game? You probably did. That means he was doing a good job. So I don't know if he'll be ready, but I thought he had an outstanding game as well. He was blowing. He blew up Jared Cook Jr. in the backfield on a third and one that led to a two, three yard loss for the Rams on third and one, led to a punt. I mean, Perry Riley was outstanding in this game. And, and I, like I said, Ryan Kerrigan starting to look like him, his old self. Didn't think he played all that great in week one. Thought he looked a lot better in week two. And the secondary, big kudos to the secondary because uh, we didn't have to put David Emerson on the field and he's no longer a resident. I'll touch on that before we get out of here. But uh, the, the secondary was outstanding. Vitamin B, he's so essential to our daily diet. Okay, so vital to our daily supplemental intake and he looked to be back in vitamin B form. I think they only targeted him once because he was taking care of business over there. Wiped out one side of the field. D'Angelo Hall, D'Angelo Hall playing some good football. I thought he tackled tremendously in this football game. And so we had everyone step up in the slot, whether it was Kaishan Jarrett, Will Blackman, whomever. We had so many people in that slot playing good football. It's not even funny. I just thought that the defense Played so well. Trenton Robinson holding it down at the other safety spot opposite of Deshaun Golson, who had another strong performance. The entire defense lights out. And so it's just a great performance all the way around. Special teams. I thought we did a poor job protecting on punts. Almost had a couple of them blocked. And I'm hearing that it was Matt Jones uh, on the, the uh, breakdowns on the protection. But hopefully they get that cleaned up. Also, uh, Dustin Hopkins. Big shout out to Dustin, Dustin Hopkins. I'm not sold yet. Again, one game doesn't make a man. However, like I said on the Redskins Rapid React, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. He made all of his uh, kicks, the extra points, and the 46-yard field goal, and he had four out of his five kicks go out of the end zone, including one going into about three, four rows into the stand. So he made a very good impression on us Redskins fans in his first uh, game as a skin. That being said, we took care of business. We got to one and one on the season. Let that just be what it is. It's a separate entity. You guys had a chance to watch the Giants lose another heartbreaker in the fourth quarter. You got to see the Eagles crap their pants and you got to see the Cowboys lose Tony Romo all in one day and everybody wanted to go crazy. I'm here to tell you, you Redskin fan, you Redskin fan, you Redskin fan, you Redskin fan, and you Redskin fan, all of you Redskin fans that are drinking the Kool-Aid today to cup down 
and remain calm and nobody gets hurt, okay? Put the cups down, all of you Redskin Kool-Aid drinkers that are talking playoffs, that are talking division, stop it! Put the cup down, don't take another sip, and be calm and nobody gets hurt, okay? That's how feelings get hurt. When you start overreacting to one win, you go overboard, and then we get our asses handed to us, and then you jump off a bridge. Let's not do that today. How about you let the Redskins play this week three game, see how that goes, and then you come back and talk to me on Friday. That sounds like a much better plan than going overboard after beating the Rams, who were fat off of Seahawks. Okay, they were fat off of the Seahawks. They felt good, they ate good last week. They had no interest in this game. They thought we were gonna lay down for them, and we did. We were desperate. Giants were desperate. They're us. Last week, okay, we came into the game at 0-1 against the Rams, desperate for a win. The Rams were 1-0. They were feeling good about themselves. They didn't need this game. They wanted it. They didn't need it. We, on the other hand, needed that game. You go to 0-2 and, and you're in really bad shape. You're in very desperate territory. The Giants are in desperate territory at 0-2. We're feeling good about ourselves. We're 1-1. We think we've done something. This Giants team, we were in this spot last year. Okay, we were in this exact spot last year, one and one, coming off the Jacksonville destruction. We go to Philadelphia, we lose. But it was a competitive game, we felt good about that. We, we host the Giants week four, prime time Thursday night matchup. They destroy us 45 to 14. Don't forget that, please don't forget that. And if you've been watching me for any period of time, you know how I feel about the Giants. I, I say this every year, and I, I'm, I say it all the time because I feel this way. The Giants are the one team in the division that scares me half to death. We can go to Dallas and win like we did last year with Colt McCoy when we were garbage. We can go to Dallas and win. We can beat the Eagles like we did week 16 to put them out of the postseason. We can beat the Eagles. I'm not afraid of those teams. The one team that continuously whoops our ass every year, the Giants. Go look at Eli Manning's record against us. Like 20, like 16, five, all right? He dominates us and we don't win in New York. When's the last time we won in New York? Can you remember? Don't say 2012, we didn't win in that year, okay? I know that for a fact. We didn't win in 2013, we didn't win in 2014. I don't know when the last time we won in New York is. Don't worry about it, it's a long time, I know that much. At least five or six years ago. We don't win in New York very often. We struggle with that team overall. They're desperate. Anytime you run into a desperate Tom Kaufman coach Giants football team, you're in for the fight of your life. I am nervous. I'll tell you a couple of keys to the football game, but I'm telling you right now, I don't feel confident about this one at all. I, I, the same blueprint for last game is the same blueprint for this game. Just take the blueprint that you had for last game, move it over to this one. The only difference is, I think we need to take more shots down the field. I think the Giants have a secondary that is vulnerable. They don't have the defensive front that the Dolphins had. They don't have the front four that the uh, Rams had. We can take shots. I think our offensive line can protect and we can take shots down the field. The Falcons did it against them with success. I think we can do the same thing. I want to see Rashad Ross on the field. And I actually think Rashad Ross is supposed to be on the field for that deep shot that we took to Ryan Grant. They actually put a pan shot on the sidelines at Jay Gruden who was arguing with Rashad Ross. I think he was telling them, you were supposed to be on the goddamn field. If you were on the field, that's a touchdown. Instead, it was Ryan Grant and he couldn't separate. So, look, all I, all I know is, I think we've got some opportunity to take some shots down the field. We can run the football like we've done in the first two weeks. And I don't see why we can't do it against this Giants front. I don't think this Giants front is scaring anybody. We should be able to run the football. That will open up some shots down the field. And I want to see Rashad Ross, number 19, get in the game and run as fast as he can to the goalpost. And I want Kirk Cousins to let it rip and see if we can't connect on a deep ball. Let's, let's try to take some shots down the field, see if we can't open some things up, have Jordan Reed continue to win on third downs and continue to do what we've done on the defensive side of football, which is stop the run and then get after the quarterback and make them uncomfortable. We want to deal with OBJ all day. We know that guy's a menace. Shame on you if you step to, to the old dirty back come. We have to deal with him. I don't know if they're going to have Victor Cruz. Will they have Victor Cruz? I don't know if they're going to have Victor Cruz. But if they got him and OBJ, it's a different animal versus just OBJ. We'll see what happens with that situation. But nonetheless, 
I like our chances. We'll have our full secondary for the first time. Again, we're not gonna get Duke Iannato back, so just count Trenton Robinson as a starter now. But I'm talking about at the cornerback position for the first time all year. Vitamin B, Cully, and D Hall all on the field at the same time should make for some interesting matchups and give us an advantage in the secondary that we haven't had all season long. Really like the way the defense is playing, really love the way the offense is playing. We got a shot, but I am not confident. But I do think we're going to win this game. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if we lose, would not surprise me in the least. I can assure you of this thing. One thing is for certain, we will not get our ass spanked like we did last year on Thursday Night Football. Won't be any embarrassment for them. I can tell you that defense is too good, offense is, offensive line is too stout. That won't happen again, but anything's possible in the not football league. But I like us to find a way to go on the road and get it done. But I'm telling you right now, if we lose, doesn't surprise me. Stop drinking. I already told you to put the goddamn cups away. Don't worry about the Eagles. Don't worry about the Cowboys. Just worry about the Giants this week. But I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter what's going on around us. We control our own destiny. If we're not taking care of business, I don't give a damn what's going on with the Cowboys and Tony Romo and Derrick Bryant. That's, that's irrelevant. I don't give a damn what's going on with the 0-2 Eagles and they look lifeless out there. If we're not taking care of us, who gives a damn? They can do what they want to do. We're still not going anywhere. So we got to take care of the business at hand. And that's the 0-2 Giants who are desperate. Remember the last time these boys were 0-2 and we had to play them? I remember, because that was like 2005 or something like that. I want to say it was, matter of fact, it was the 2007 season because they were 0-2. They had given up 80 points in the first two games. The Packers had blazed them. And I want to say the Cowboys blazed them in the first two weeks of the season. They had given up 80 points and they were talking about firing the defensive coordinator. And they showed up to FedEx Field and we had a 14 to nothing lead at halftime. And we lose the game 14 to 17. Plaxico Burris catches a late touchdown in the fourth quarter, beats us. I remember that. I remember the Redskins had on their throwback jerseys with the yellow pants and the actual uh, 70s helmet with the R with the feather. Yeah, I remember all of that. I'm a Redskins fan, man. Nothing sneaks by me, okay? The Giants torment me in my sleep. So if you think this is going to be easy, you got another thing coming. I am a Redskins fan, as from Burgundy and Gold. My Redskins spirit will never die. My Redskins spirit will never fall. Until we meet again, hell to the goddamn Redskins. As I always say, this time of the week, go get them, fellas. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. The Red Skins Report.